Uh, my name is Roy Henry Vickers, and I believe in strong libraries and strong communities. What was my favorite book as a child? That would be The Legends of Vancouver by E. Pauline Johnson. It was, uh, it was a book that my mother's father, my grandfather, who was from England and he lived in Vancouver. And when I visited him as a child with my parents, he read me um, The Legend of Siwash Rock, and that's one that has stayed with me throughout my life. So what was the most recent book I've read? Um, Voices from the Skeena is the book, and it's actually my own book. And again, it's one of those books that reaches back in time. And this one back in time before the railroad, before highways and cars came into this country. It's a story of how the Skeena River opened up the North Country to people traveling from down south. It's about paddle wheelers um, who plied the Skeena from a city that was called Port Essington that no longer exists. And they ran the Skeena from Port Essington to Hazleton about, uh, oh, I'm going to guess 150 miles of water. I must say the images were all inspired and they were all created by myself. And they were inspired by the river that I know today as well as the stories that I've heard about the river from days gone by and by the um, recordings of a man called Imbert Orchard, who in the 60s traveled through British Columbia interviewing uh, elders all over BC. And uh, when I heard his recordings of the people from this area, I was living in Victoria and I was kind of lost as a teenager and uh, they inspired me and helped me on the journey that I'm on now. What resources do I use from the library? Well, today they're all uh, online resources. Um, there's one library in Hazleton. Uh, however, as I'm speaking to you, I recall a beautiful story. It's about me, but it's really, it's made beautiful by my art teacher from Old Bay High School in Victoria. Um, Mr. West encouraged me as a young man to research my uh, background my grandparents on my father's side, who were Simshan from Kitkatla, Haida Gwaii, Haidas, and Hailsuk from Bella Bella. And when I went to the school library, there was not a single book about what well, we called ourselves Indians in those days. <clears throat> so I still use the term as an, as an elder today. Um, but what we did, what I did was went into the library and there was nothing there. So I went to Mr. West and I said, well, we have nothing, we have no books uh, that I can study. And so he encouraged me to go to the Victoria Library, the massive library. And I went there and I couldn't find anything. So I went to the library and then I said, uh, do you have any books on the Indians of BC, like the Simshan and the Haida and the Hiltzuk from Bella Bella? And the librarian directed me to books by Boaz, B-O-A-Z, I think. He was an um, anthropologist. 
and he had an interpreter and he traveled throughout northern BC to my village and other villages that I grew up in and, and where I live now. And reading those old books was kind of frustrating because I couldn't take them out of the library. So I sat there and read them and read them and read them. And now you can go online and find those books. And uh, when I worked on the on all of the books that I've done, I've accessed uh, library information on the internet. So that's what I use mostly. And I have to add to this that it's a massive thrill for me to be talking to librarians about my books. And it seems like um, those frustrations of earlier years and meeting authors like Hillary um, Wilson Duff, who wrote one of the books that has guided me through my life, and Hillary Stewart, who wasn't an author yet, but she was working on different books. And they were friends of mine that worked in the Museum of BC. So um, libraries have, have been and still are a big part of my research and my studies. How does my life story affect the books that I read and the books that I'm drawn to? First of all, ignorance is not something that I've ever been ashamed of because I learned at a young age that ignorance is dispelled with knowledge and books supply knowledge, give us knowledge, information to guide us through life. So being born in a place where there was no electricity, um, no TV, no radios, um, music and musicians and songs, which were written in books. Um, and books were where all knowledge came from. So as a young child growing up, I was naturally drawn to any book that I could find interesting. And at first it was Hiawatha, um, The Legends of Vancouver. Those are two that stand out strongly for me. Um, and I, finding that there were no books in the school that I wanted to study from because nobody had written anything about Simshen, Haida, Kwagyul, and people called the new channels Nutka in those days. So most of the so-called knowledgeable world was ignorant of First Nations peoples on the coast. And so as I grew up in my life and began to study my history, English and West Coast, Haida Simshen and uh, Hiltzuk, I was always drawn to anything that would give me information, not only about the people in BC, but about British Columbia itself, the land, the rivers, the mountains, the weather patterns, the fish, uh, because our environment uh, shapes our language and our culture. So if I want to learn who I am and where I come from, the best thing for me to do outside of reading books is find resources in libraries about places where I grew up and go there and walk on the beach or walk on the, on the land and, and connect to the land, which is connecting to my ancestry. How do images and stories tie together for me? One of the stories that comes to mind and the image that comes to mind is sitting with my son and telling him stories, just like stories were told to me. The most important story you have to share with the world is your story. And as a parent, that is emphatically, incredibly true. 
that we as parents must share our stories with our children. And so that's what I always did with my children. And one evening I sat with my son, William, who was lying on the bed beside me and I was telling him a story. And I looked over at him and continued telling the story and I could see him just lying there looking up at the ceiling. And I, I continued telling the story and I don't know how this works in our minds, but I, I just put my hand, I ran my hand uh, across his field of vision and he didn't see my hand. He, he, he was looking at the images, he was, his vision was active. And so I was impressed uh, with the fact that if we, if we are emoting, telling our stories, then the listener is carried away with images and we don't know what the images are, they're just there. And so that's how it affected me. I realized that when we listen to stories, we are watching a movie in our vision because we're all visionaries. And so the, the power of storytelling is immense. And before uh, colonization, all teaching of my father's ancestors in this country, and I come from a village that has been there, consistently lived in for over 5,000 years. And it's only been a couple of hundred years that we've actually had books and schools where we have this different system of teaching. And I'm glad to be doing this because I realize that the stories that we hear and the land that we walk on and the experiences we have are all tied together. So when we hear a story, the magic of vision happens in our minds and I as I'm speaking to you I close my eyes because I can all these images are flashing by of all of the stories that I've heard and the places where I heard them and the places that I've been and the places that I went to because I heard the story so a very powerful connection between the storyteller and the, the story and the images that we see in our minds it's magic what am I working on lately? At 74 years of age, I, my creativity and my inspiration is, is, is much bigger than it's ever been in my life. So as an artist and a writer and an image producer, uh, it's always happening. It's, it's not, it, it, it is, it's not work, it's just my life. And so I just finished a book about, illustrating a book about um, sea gardens, and they're mostly about clam gardens that have been around for thousands of years, and they still exist at low tide. You can see them in places on the coast. So I just finished that book, and I just created a, an image for a limited edition print that will be published through my gallery in Tofino, and it's the cover of that book. And the image is of a sunset in Kitkatla Inlet, and there are waves moving, and the waves look like lines. It's just, it's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, so that's one thing I'm working on. I'm also working on illustrating yoga positions um, so i'm bringing together two ancient um, not only philosophies but ways of living and connection to ourselves and our mindfulness and our bodyfulness so connecting mind and body and spirit and it's been a very exciting project so through this whole COVID-19 uh, crisis, it's like there's no crisis for me. I'm doing exactly what I always do and social distancing is something that just happens naturally in my life when I'm working as an artist because I wanna be alone and, 
and do what I'm inspired to do. So there's so many projects, books, images, uh, books, images. So I'm working on another book now, a little board book, and it's actually the alphabet. So A is for abalone, B e is for bear, uh, O is for orca. So it's it's uh, the letters of the alphabet and then imagery of whatever that letter represents to me. So putting those all together for a little board book for kids. <laughs>